Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends, it's Magic Brad here on Synergy Cafe, and I got my friend KJ. I'm gonna try and pronounce your name here if I can do this. It's uh, it's Kalichi um, Javid. Yeah? Close enough, it's Kaleki Javid. Kaleki, Kaleki, not Kalichi. You got the last name right. It's close. <laughs> well, I know, I understand why you go with KJ. <laughs> KJ is cool, it's J to the J. <laughs> there you go. I use my, uh, my magic Brad name because my last name is Goodham and some people either they don't know how to spell it or they know how to, if they know how to spell it they can't say it and if they know how to say it they can't spell it. Yeah your name doesn't look like how it's spelled though. Right. <laughs> G-U-D-I-M and they there are some people who say like Guidum or whatever but yeah. Hey I didn't I didn't yeah. choose it. <laughs> what ethnic is, is that or culture? Norwegian. Norwegian oh okay y'all make for good. gripe sakes yeah. Yeah, y'all make good Danish cookies. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad had a lot of Norwegian in my mom was Scotch, English, Irish, Dutch, and German. <laughs> oh, German, yeah. German make good beer, good sauces. <laughs> See, have you lived in the Twin Cities all your life, or where'd you come from? I originally came from the Twin Cities. I was uh, working out in the NBA Summer League in Los Angeles and had a little bit of interest from Timberwolves. Or it was North Carolina Hornets. And uh, I remember my auntie, my grandma lived here. I called my auntie up, you know, because uh, she's pretty cool. I said, hey, how is Minnesota? She said, oh, you'll love it. It's the, white, the white girls love brothers. You should come here. <laughs> so I was like, I'm on my way. <laughs> I like it. I've been here all my life. I grew up here, and I did spend a couple of years in L.A. working on a project and a couple of years in Asheville, North Carolina. But I really like the change of the seasons here. It kind of makes you appreciate. Oh, I like two of the changes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm originally from Omaha, though. I, from where? I, in Omaha. I grew up in Omaha, City, Toledo, New York, uh, Detroit a little bit. So we grew up a little bit traveling. And uh, I settled my last two years, three years of high school in Omaha. And, uh, but I was born there, and then years in between, just having to go by five, go by fast, living in other places. But, you know, KJ, we've had a couple of coffees, and I didn't even ask you. Uh, are you married? You got kids, or what's yeah, going on? Yeah, I'm married. Yep. Oh okay. yeah. Yeah, we blended family. We have about five sons, two daughters. A herd. Yeah. Well, we have. <laughs> So yeah, I've been married for about twelve years now. So, yeah. Very cool. What does your wife do? She's a culinary artist and a health and wellness specialist. Got it. You know, yeah. so, like some people always talk about the money and all that kind of stuff, but you know what? You can have all the money if you want, and if you don't have your health, what's the point? You know, it, health uh, is an important yeah. thing. Yeah, health is 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 it allows you to to live life on an abundance level, if you don't have health, you know, you don't have, like you say, you don't have really anything because you can't take any, any of this stuff with you. When it's time to go, it's time to go. And you, you, you literally don't know, don't know when it's time to go, but you know that, yeah. you know, if you're not healthy and you have health problems, it, it, it makes life a little bit difficult. So I just came from the gym. I spent like two times. Well, you do some fitness coaching or something, don't you? Yeah, I do personal okay. training. Yep. Uh, I personal train athletes. Um, I used to train with NBA players back in the day because I worked out, you know, myself, try to make the league and all that. I didn't make it. I had some injuries. And I've learned to enjoy fitness on a level that, that you know, I'm 56 years old. Most people say I don't look it, whatever. I, I just enjoy, like, martial arts, boxing, basketball. Really? What, what martial arts are you in? Ishinru. I've heard of it. I'm a Taekwondo guy myself. Ishinru is Golden Rule and Shoa Rule mix. And, and, I, and, I, and I train with a little bit of other arts too, like Jiu Jitsu, uh, Judo. I, I mix it up a little bit. But yeah, um, I, I'm just a fitness kind of. There's like a, a fight this, uh, this weekend. Maybe you want to go with it to me, with me to it. Uh, so I'm working Friday and Saturday night, but <laughs> well, I, I think this, uh, I don't remember the time. I'll, I'll let you know. There's um, a, I'm a Taekwondo guy and there's a guy that, um, 
is it chaos contact. or does it uh what is it uh, uh the the uh what they call it the um just the kickboxing stuff it's nothing none of the cage stuff that's not the cage stuff okay it's crazy when yeah. i was out in la they used to do these things like they find a nightclub they do these underground things and they find a nightclub they shut it down and they set the cage up on the dance floor wow. you didn't even know what was happening it's pretty wild out there in la <laughs> yeah that's pretty wild but anyway yeah i love fitness love to eat well love to uh just be you know just be healthy. Healthy is, is the key to anything in life, being healthy. Well, that kind of segues into, like you just mentioned, your work, and because you do comedy also, which I think laughter is a good medicine, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I've been a stand-up comedian for about 15 years. Uh, how I got into comedy was one day I walked in the Brave New Workshop, did a monologue about my dad teaching me how to drink and uh, my dad passed away four years ago, but that monologue got me a full scholarship. I did a year and then we did plays afterward. And then um, what I learned to do sketch comedy, like improv, riffs and rant. I have five, I have, I had five viral videos on YouTube in the beginning when YouTube was just exploring with comedy, like maybe 11 years ago. Like I was a poor friend, I was, my comedy was featured on TMZ and CBS because me and my friend, maker friend, and and comedians, we all were comedians. He he was he was uh, great at editing, but he lied. He couldn't do it live. But me and the other guy, Kevin Kraft, were just going. But to make a long story shorter, uh, yeah, that was my introduction to comedy, and then. Uh, I had to learn how to joke write, and then I bought like five joke writing books, and uh, I learned to to uh, place my voice in the structure and, and learn to have fun with a point of view and you know storytelling, traditional jokes, one-liners, riffs and raps, improv, observational. I can go on and on. I have about seven, eight styles of writing that I use to to in my in my routine because I'm a very different kind of complex unique how, how long you been doing stand up about 15 years okay so you got your teeth cut yeah my teeth <laughs> just cut yeah because the comedy world is pretty bizarre you're up there with just a microphone and sometimes not even that you know you got a small oh, room you don't need a microphone. microphone can go out on you you got to project man you know people pay money you know they sit yeah. there like what you gonna do <laughs> like i'm gonna finish telling these jokes and get my check and get the hell up out of here i'm gonna do <laughs> And you got to know how to work with the vibe of the audience because there's different people and certain jokes in Minnesota don't go over in California. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's certain jokes that are just seasonal for here, like black ice. I can't do a black ice joke in California. You know? <laughs> they say, what? Yeah, because they don't know <laughs> nothing about ice, you know, like, so. <laughs> Yeah, certain joke or ice fishing. I can't do that out in California. No, I used to vacation in Jamaica, and we were telling the guys that the lakes freeze over, and they actually fish in Jamaica. Yeah. They fish in the lakes. They go, what? They couldn't believe it. They could not yeah. believe it. Can't do that in L.A., you know. <laughs> I go up in the mountains where it's snowing, and they talk about ice fishing, yeah, and see if they got it up there. But no, nah, you know, you can't. Certain material is <laughs> regional, and certain material is, is, you know, you can do anywhere. You know, you do marriage material anywhere you can do material about um people um you know driving skills you can do certain material you can do anywhere but then there's certain materials that's regional but you still got to feel out the audience too i mean like you got the yeah. gig this weekend you don't know what like you have to fill out the audience you got i mean you know comedy is really about um taking the audience on a journey you know you, you know i've learned to be a very unique interesting comedian if i'm not funny i'm gonna be interesting as hell you know <laughs> what do you say, <laughs> yeah. what do you say? huh i'll be interesting you know, because you you don't want to lose your audience so you want to engage them in a the journey and so i might do a joke that that you know is not rare for a comic you know like talking about how I didn't make it to the NBA with, you know, Kevin Garnett dunking so hard on me, uh, you know, or I might talk about health and wellness, you know, like my wife gave me some poop stoops and I didn't know what they was. I, <laughs> I was like, what is they potty squatty? What is that? Uh, 
and it elevates. I'm already six feet six, and I like to read the newspaper when I'm taking a dump. And but, <laughs> but now all of a sudden, my feet, my knees is up by my chest, and the poop stoops of potty squatty has made me a newspaper stand because of the elevation of my legs. <laughs> And then I noticed that, you know, you're, I don't know if you ever use it, but it's as, if, it's as if the turd walked up to the high board and said, hey, we about to die. We about to take a dive into this, uh, what do they call, water slide. And it comes, shoots out like at a 45 degree angle or, or you diving off the, the high board and there's no splash, you know, you like, so how, how do we get into this topic? Yeah, I was like, hey. <laughs> she asked me how was it. You know, I said uh, it was amazing. You know, I didn't, I didn't know that that was they was for. I, I didn't know I was been taking improper dumps all these years, but now I'm using poops to potty squatties now. Well, there you go. Maybe there's a class for it. You can do an online course. No, oh, there's no class to that. <laughs> You gotta learn on your own. Okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, yeah. before I ask my favorite question, because I do that sometimes, like where do you work? Are you primarily local, regional, or you just kind of go wherever the check is? I go all over the country, man. I was just in St. Louis last weekend at Blueberry Hill Theater. Um, I probably in the coming in December have gigs all over. I do improv, funny bone comedy clubs. I do comedy clubs. I do, do bars. You I do some do, acting too, right? Yeah, I do acting yeah. too. I just played the lead role in a film, in an indie film. The director's name is John Oster. I played the lead role uh, called the, uh, the Father. I was a West African father from Benin, and my son got killed. And it's a revenge movie. And I played the father. I had to learn a West African accent too. And this is the first time I stretched myself in a dramatic role, but the director thinks he's gonna get a lot of awards. He really do, he's really excited about it. And I'm excited too, because acting is a different job than the comedy. Oh, yeah. You have to take somebody else's material and naturalize it and find a sense of memory in your life and bring that reality to, to the character and make that character come alive so you can tell somebody else's story, your instrument in, in, in somebody else's script. As an actor, it is your job to bring size and life to them words. And, and it's a lot different if it's the screen or the theater too. Yeah, so when we screen, I'm definitely gonna invite you and your wife to come out, man. You can see me uh, <laughs> You know, in Benin, in the village, it was every good. Yeah, you see, <laughs> you see me in a whole different light, a whole different character. Shapeshifter, you're going to transform. Yeah, but I love it. I love, uh, cool. I love being an artist. Uh, I love the freedom that it gives me to express not only myself, but if I have to, to tell someone else's story as an actor, but as a comedian, I have a lot to say in comedy is a vehicle to say things you want to say. If I can get people to remember a joke or to go to work thinking about it or laughing at it, then I've done my job and I've thoroughly entertained humanity with laughter, which is a gift that I take seriously, that I really work on uh, developing every night, you know, writing jokes and all that kind of stuff. Man. Well, that kind of goes into my final question, then I'm gonna shut this off and beam it up to the universe, but... Uh... The big question is why? Why do you do this? I mean, I kind of know that you, you, you want to make people happy and make them laugh and stuff, but there's there's a deeper meaning yeah. behind the big why. Absolutely. Why do you do what you do? Absolutely. The reason I do it is, a, a first and foremost, it satisfies a creative yearning in my soul. It, it, it man, it, it satisfies me. Um, it gives me so much fulfillment and life is about having joy and happiness and things that give you fulfillment and comedy fulfills that void of not get you know i'm gonna tell you like i, I used to be a school teacher so i'm gonna tell you what i used to tell my students so, you know sometimes in life 
you're not going to get the dream you want. Like I wanted the NBA dream. You're going to get the dream you need by yeah. trial and error, trying different things. You're going to find that necessity in your life and that's going to be your passion and it's going to drive you to explore that passion you're going to have an ambitious and adventurous drive to explore it and and that's what comedy does for me it's just not it's just not about the audience either it satisfies me in a way that is so medicinal to my soul that i can't even explain the high i get man so you're you know? following your purpose kind of thing you kind of absolutely absolutely your a, lot art. Of, a lot of people never discover their purpose or their meaning in life they just go through life aimlessly doing things because they think they have to do it out of necessity working for somebody else building somebody else's dream corporation they do it because they think they and you have to make money don't get me wrong you do but you finally got to take care of yourself but i've been able it's just now getting to a rhythm with comedy where it's starting to take care of me the way i deserve to be take care of it in this building still it's it's, it's always a work well you problem. never know where the heck it might lead i mean like, if you're in your head like i was when i got out of high school people said you should get a job so i did i did it for about three years and then i got laid off and then i went in to do the magic and i started doing more entrepreneurial stuff, but I did get in my right. head and got a job because that's what I thought you're supposed to do. But if you're doing what you love and you want to act and you want to do comedy and stuff, you end up getting discovered and who knows what you might be doing. You might be a, you know, a, a sting character. You, yeah, you, might end up, you, you, know. you never know, man, because I, I had a job 15, 17 teacher, man, and uh, in that job, in the role of a teacher, I realized that these kids, um they were they were they were happy when i used like comedy and humor to deliver their 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 lesson plans and then i kind of realized well maybe i'm not really not a teacher i'm just an entertainer a comedian in the form of teacher because it seems like every time i bring comedy out or introduce them to writing arts like poetry comedy to band, kind, kind of but they probably remembered a lot better because yeah. they had fun doing yeah. it yeah, the, the school had, system. The, they, the they had so much fun doing it. As a matter of fact, back in the day, I was at Henry doing Henry High School teacher John Barr, who's a famous reporter for ESPN and different uh, networks. Did a special on ABC. I think he got an award for it. But it was, it was a dope concept where I had found a way to develop a curriculum uh, using arts as a conflict resolution to enhance kids' social skills and cognitive thinking, critical thinking skills. Yeah. So I, I use it as a way to, to engage with them and then for them to socially engage with each other using arts. Because now, you know, schools took an arts out and it's so uh, uh, standardized scores based, you know. You know, they, right. they, you know, they think that that's the, the thing to, that's how they allot the federal money is based on kids' reading level, you know. And I think social skills, arts, cognitive thinking, critical thinking, uh, getting them out in the community and putting them in projects, cooperative learning, which is group learning, is way more, way more, gives kids way more training for life than what they make on the test. And it's more of, uh, there's no walls around it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, you get into that. Okay, I'm in first grade. This is what I do. I'm in second grade. This is what I do. I go to school yeah. at eight o'clock. I get out at three. Yeah, I mean, you got to get these kids out in the community, man, and giving them life skills, teaching them how to work with each other and work with other. Because at the bottom line, you go through high school and college. The bottom line is when you get done with school training, you got to learn how to work. You got to know how to work with people. You can't work yeah. with people. You have you your education has abused you. You, you. you know it didn't service you the way it's supposed to. So, but yeah, they they kids used to tell me, you know, Mr. KJ, we seen you on YouTube. You should be a comedian. And when I got paid off, I listened to that. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> go. I've got that on here somewhere. Where's it? What's that? My little my little ta da thing. Ta-da! <laughs>
Ta-da, that was ta-da moment. Ta -da. <laughs> well, with that, KJ, I'm going to sign this thing off. We want to, how do we get a hold of you in case somebody wants to hire you for a gig or someone wants um, to uh, fight, whatever? They can, they can get a hold of me uh, at email, kjaythecomic at gmail. I have a website, kjaythecomedian. They can leave a note. They can call me. Uh, 612-437-3981. They can social media me, K-J-A-Y, the comedian on Facebook. Uh, I want it was like a K and a J-A-Y. -Y. K -J. J -Y. Yep, J-A-Y. J -Y. J spelled out, J-A-Y, the comedian on Facebook. I would give them my real name Facebook page, but it's already filled up. But I just said, I'm, I'm using more of my fan page now just to connect with people and then i have another page k javade enterprise on facebook k j a a -B I see that. On, i will uh, link that stuff in this thing and when i what i do is i put it up to youtube and then i put it on yeah. blogs and stuff and propagate it out to the world and tomorrow night welton big 10 arden hills 4703 highway 10 and is 8 30 p.m i will be joe diller Cashing in jokes for laughs. Now bring you, bring your little booties there and let me cash these jokes in for laughs. Cause I'm trying to make the world better. One joke, one show at a time. This is what <laughs> dope dealers do. At least I do. <laughs> okay. You want to stay right. on? We'll talk a little bit other than that. I'm gonna wrap this up. We'll talk. Oh, no problem. Up. No problem. Peace. Peace. Thank you.